Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Well, thank you. So what is going on with Mastin? What's new with Mastin Space Systems? Oh, man, so much is going on right now. Um, entry, descent, and landing is a big thing that we've been working on uh, recently. We've brought Zombie out of retirement. Um, we're also doing some design work on some future concepts, uh, something we call Zeus. Um, and basically, it's a uh, lunar lander for, for NASA for landing on the moon or Mars or, or doing close approaches to asteroids, uh, which is a really interesting project. And just trying to get a little more traction out of the NASA side of things. Um, we've been working with a couple of NASA centers on that. So um, that's really exciting. That's, yeah, that, that's really the big thing that I'm, I'm into right now. Although I actually do very little work on that project, but that's, that's the most exciting project going on in the company right now. Well, what more can you tell me about it? Are you guys going to be building the entire vehicle yourselves, or are you going to be working in collaboration with NASA? How, how is that so, going to take So the idea here is, 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 I mean, this is, this is really the, we believe, the right thing to do for the nation and the nation's space program. So we really want NASA to actually take ownership of it. Um, of course, right now there really isn't the budget for it, and it's sort of a newish idea. But we've managed to get a few people at a few different NASA centers to commit a few hours of their time, um, helping us work on it. And uh, um, so, actually, I should probably give you some history about this because it goes back back in the during the Apollo program. Uh, some guys came up with the idea that you could take a portion of the Saturn V, the, the upper stages of it. And instead of doing this little tiny um, vertically stacked lander and ascent module, you could make a thing that comes down and lands sideways so that instead of having this long ladder to, to come down, you could just open the ramp and you can just roll whatever off or, uh, and whatever. Um, and that idea sort of gotten forgotten. And then um, several years ago now, um, a couple of people at ULA published a paper about using a Centaur upper stage uh, from an Atlas V or a, uh, or a Delta IV and, and using that, you know, you can make some conversions, add some engines to the side and use that as a lander and basically it lands horizontally. I mean, it's still, it's vertical in that it comes down and it touches down just like a helicopter, but it's horizontal and the tank isn't the normal orientation you'd see it in. Um, and you know, there's actually a lot of benefits for it. Uh, one, you're using space-proven hardware already. You know, it has absolutely no problems in the environment. Um, and we're combining that with, you know, some proven propulsion systems from us, which happen to be the right size to land something of that size on the moon. Um, and so, it, and it just makes a lot of sense. And the other big thing, like I said, you've got the payload on the front end of it, and it's actually down close to the ground. So you can, you know, make a small ramp and you have very easy access for a rover, for people walking off onto the surface, and you don't have to pull all sorts of stuff down or up. You don't have to have these cranes. Um, and, and so it just makes it a lot easier. And you already have most of the hardware built. So it's not a huge, massive development project. So no, and even better, it fits on top of the SLS or an Atlas V, or a Delta IV. So you can launch it using just about anything. It's out there. It fits within a standard payload fairing. So in order to land it vertically, would you actually have some high thrust engines in order to do that, or would it just be a ton of altitude control thrusters? So what we actually do is, they're smaller engines. Um, for the, the terrestrial demonstrator, we're using our 3,000 pound class rocket engines. Um, and there's four of those for the terrestrial demonstrator. Um, there might be a future terrestrial demonstrator will use six of them. Um, and that would be the case where we actually put something simulating the payload on front. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just a small number of, uh, basically, you know, sort of vernier type engines. They're smaller engines. So you have the RL-10. That does most of the, the braking to get to the lunar surface. But then, you know, when you're, you know, a couple hundred meters off the, off the deck, you shut down the RL-10, turn on our engines, and then land. Now, um, once it does land, will the tank be empty and stay there, or would you try to bring it back? Yes. It, it all depends on how much mass you have. Um, you know, obviously, I, I think uh, ULA would probably like to see them just sit there on the surface. Um, 
being a myself being a reusable kind of guy wants to you know land it and lift it off and take it back to low lunar orbit or, or the Lagrange points. Um, but both are possible. I mean, it, it's it depends on how you want to set up your mission, how much payload you want to get to the surface. If you want to put 14 tons to the surface, then yeah, you just you know take it out of low lunar orbit, put it on the surface, and you've got 14 tons there. It's going to sit there. Of course. That huge tank makes for some great space. So you can basically siphon off the remaining hydrogen and oxygen out of the tanks, make water and energy, and you now have huge living quarters. Pretty much pull off a Skylab on the moon. Um, yeah, yeah, and then some. Wow. So what kind of payloads would be on this stage? Um, well, I mean, the primary purpose we're basically looking at the current direction, the, the current mission of record for NASA, uh, human spaceflight, is the Space Launch System and the Orion capsule. Um, and I guess I actually changed the name of MPC, whatever. Yeah, everyone, everyone still calls it Orion. <laughs> so, so basically you have, you have a, a capsule and, and uh, command module and you have a rocket and you have no way of getting to the lunar surface, you have no way of getting to the Martian surface, you have really, you know, actually rendezvousing and, and, and contacting a, 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 an asteroid is impossible with what they have. So that's, you need that element. Um, and in fact, uh, I was actually just reading an article, um, Steve Squires, who's recently uh, joined the NASA Advisory Committee, has been talking about, hey, you're missing a major piece here. Hey, guess what? We have that piece. We're, we're ready to go with it. Um, I think you know NASA can take this over and really make it part of, of what they're doing. They they have something that can land on land on any one of the asteroids. It can land on Deimos, Phobos, Mars, Moon, wherever you want to go. We, you know we can make this work for that. And that's that's really what's exciting to me. Is it's like this is a multi-purpose landing vehicle. Now, what about NASA's crew exploration vehicle? Would that be something that could possibly be a, a, a payload that could be on, on board this? So, so yeah, I mean, we, you know, what we're building right now is pretty much the propulsion part of it. Um, so, yeah, you, you know, attach on the front end. There's uh, a number of different ideas, and we actually have some pictures somewhere um, of different designs of things where humans are in it and land it in it becomes a rover or what have you. And, and there's lots of good ideas that are in NASA that we can attach the front end of it and make it work. Now, as far as I know, you guys either already have or are in the process of acquiring uh, a Centaur upper stage? We have an old Centaur upper stage sitting in what we, what we call a stable. <laughs> um, it's a, a, a small building that's big enough to house a Centaur upper stage, but uh, this is an older uh, upper stage that was, um, it was damaged um, during production, shortly after production, pre-flight. So I, I'm not sure exactly what, but it was damaged. It, it cannot be used to fly. Um, and ULA was looking to get rid of it, and we were looking at, hey, we, we can use that. So Now, would that be the terrestrial demonstrator, or could that? That will be the terrestrial demonstrator. That cannot do anything but terrestrial demonstrator. We cannot put hydrogen into the hydrogen tank of it, um, because that's, that's where the damage was. So there's a small leak there, and you, yeah, hydrogen in a leak, yeah, it's hard enough to seal against hydrogen. <laughs> so what would you use for fuel? So, well, what we're actually doing is we actually use, um, and it's mostly for propellant management, is that you get to, towards, you know, if during the real mission you get close to the lunar surface, you're pretty much out of fuel. You have just a little bit left. What we do is we put that in small tanks that are mounted alongside of it that little bit, and we don't have to worry about all the slosh issues then. We, we take more of that mass away into smaller tanks, slosh isn't an issue or as much of an issue, and, and use that, that propellant. So, um, and then, you know, for the terrestrial demonstrator, we're actually just going to use those tanks. We just fill those tanks up. We don't fill up the big ones. And, but what we do for terrestrial demonstrator is put water into the oxygen side of it so that you have a large slosh mass that you can test and, and say, okay, yeah, this is, this is what the slosh modes look like. This is how it's going to work. 
Now, how can people get involved? Do you even want help from, from other people? So we're always, we're always recruiting top talent. Um, go to our website at maston.aero and there should be some place in there you can click on uh, and it'll take you to our, uh, our uh, resume page where you can upload your resume and, and uh, it'll alert us to say, hey, there's somebody new and interesting to take a look at. Um, and we have our internship program. So if you're a student and you want to intern with us, we, uh, every, every semester we have um, at least two, sometimes three, internship opportunities. So and again, that's the same process. Go to, the, go to our webpage, find the, the, the thing for hiring, and uh, upload your resume.